In the last video, we introduced the Black Litterman Asset Allocation Model. And in fact, it isn't really an asset allocation model. It's more a model to generate estimates of expected excess returns. In this video, I'm going to show you how to implement the Black Litterman Model in Excel. As a quick recap, remember what the Black Litterman Model is trying to do. It's trying to combine information from two sources to create an estimate of expected returns. The first source is what does the current market tell us about expected excess returns. And Black and Litterman showed us how to calculate implied equilibrium excess returns. The second source of information was the views of the investment manager or the analysts working for the investment manager. And the Black Litterman model combines these two sources to produce estimates of expected excess returns. Here we have the formula for the Black Litterman model. We're not going to work through the formula now, we're going to do it in Excel. Now let's turn to our example. We're using the five stocks that we've used throughout the class Intel, Amazon, AEP, ExxonMobil, and Merck. And we have views about the expected returns for these stocks. We think that AEP is going to outperform ExxonMobil by 1% per month. And we think that Intel is going to outperform Amazon by 1.75% per month. These are relative views because we're comparing two stocks. If we were just looking at one stock, such as AEP, and saying that the returns will be 2% per month, that would be an absolute view. But in practice, absolute views are fairly rare. Much more common is the idea of a relative view. So let's switch into Excel and implement the Black Ritterman model. This is the spreadsheet that we've been building up over the last few weeks. And here we were calculating implied equilibrium excess returns. And that's where we finished. Now we're going to extend the sheet to calculate Black Litterman expected excess returns. The first thing we have to do is enter all the inputs. Let's start with our views. View number one is that AEP is going to outperform ExxonMobil by 1% per month. So we're going to enter 0.01 for the first view. The second view is that Intel is going to outperform Amazon by 1.75% per month. But entering the views alone is not sufficient. We also need to fill out the link matrix so that we know who the views are referring to. So that we know which companies the views are referring to. If we think about view 1, Intel is not part of that view. AEP is, so we have a 1 for AEP, because we want to be long AEP, we're positive about AEP. Amazon is not part of the view, neither is Merck, and we're negative about ExxonMobil, because it's going to underperform relative to AEP. If we think about our second view, it's, we're positive about Intel, so we have 1 for Intel. It's nothing to do with AEP. We are negative about Amazon. And we have no view on Merck or ExxonMobil. We've now completed our link matrix. And you can see that if we sum across the row for view 1, the elements add up to 0. The same for view 2. If we look at the positive elements in view 1, there is only 1 and it adds up to 1. If we look at the negative elements, they add up to minus 1. In this case, it's all for ExxonMobil. So the rules that we talked about in the last lecture hold here. Let's name these ranges so that we can refer to them later. The view matrix will be called Q, and the link matrix will be called P. 
We can also label the implied equilibrium excess returns. In the formulas, we refer to them as pi. The next input that we have to calculate is omega, which is the uncertainty associated with our views. And Black and Litterman advocated using this formula, omega equals tau times by p times by s times by p transpose. We're setting tau to 1 throughout our analysis, so we're left with p times by s times by p transpose. Let's select the cells where we're going to put omega calculations. Because we have two views, omega is going to be a 2 by 2 matrix. So we select the space and we type mmult. Now we've got two matrix multiplications to do here. We're going to do p times by s, and we'll call that b, and then b times by the transpose of p. So let's first of all calculate p times by s. So that's m mult p comma s close brackets comma. So that's our b element, and now we're going to multiply that by the transpose of p. Close brackets. And now we can press Control, Shift, and Enter. We've now calculated omega, the uncertainty associated with our views. Let's label that up, omega. We now have all the inputs necessary to calculate the expected excess returns based on the Black-Litterman model. We have our implied equilibrium excess returns here. We have the variance covariance matrix S on the previous sheet. We also have our view matrix, we have our link matrix, and we have the uncertainty associated with our views. The Black Litterman formula is a long and complicated formula, especially when you're typing it in Excel. What we're going to do is split it into two sections. Section 1 here. That's the first part of the formula, and then the second part of the formula over here. Let's select the cells for the first part of the formula. We need to select a 5 by 5 matrix. Then we're going to type in the formula listed above, which equals the inverse of everything inside the square brackets. So let's get that typed out. M inverse, open brackets. The first thing we're going to look at is the inverse of S. So we need M inverse S, close brackets, plus. Now we need to do matrix multiplication because we've got to do P transpose times by omega inverse times by P. Again, this is two matrix multiplication operations. Hopefully you're becoming used to this now. So we're going to do M mult, open brackets, M mult again. And we're going to do P transpose times by the inverse of omega. So transpose of P times by M inverse open brackets, omega, close brackets. And then we close the brackets around that multiplication. That will be our B, if you like. And now we're going to do B times by P. So we press comma and then P. Close the brackets. That's our matrix multiplication complete. We can now press Control, Shift, and Enter. And we've calculated the first part of the expected excess return formula. Let's name this exp underscore ret underscore one. Now let's scroll across and consider the second part of the formula for the Black-Litterman model. 
we're going to select five cells and we're going to enter the formula given here S inverse times by pi plus P transpose times by omega inverse times by Q. So that's going to be equals. And we've got M mult. And we're going to do the inverse of S. So M inverse S. That's going to be multiplied by pi, which is our implied equilibrium excess returns. Close brackets. Plus, now we've got another matrix multiplication to do. Again, there are two matrix multiplications here. So M mult, open brackets, M mult. We'll do transpose of P times by M inverse of omega. close brackets and all of that will be multiplied by Q which is our views close the brackets we can press control shift enter and we've now calculated the second part of the formula for expected excess returns let's name these cells X underscore ret underscore 2. We can calculate the expected excess returns according to the Black Litterman model. Let's select the five cells where we want them to go and type equals. We need to do matrix multiplication M mult. The first element is going to be the expected returns part 1. The second element is going to be the expected returns part 2. Control shift and enter. Let's label that up. Mu underscore BL. Do these returns make sense relative to the implied equilibrium excess returns? Because what we've done is modify the implied equilibrium excess returns. Let's copy the implied equilibrium excess returns so we can compare them. We were very positive about Intel relative to Amazon. The implied equilibrium excess returns for Intel were 0.9% per month and for Amazon they were 0.74%. What we see now is that Intel's expected excess returns have increased to over 1% or over 1.1% per month, while Amazon's expected excess returns have decreased to just 0.2% per month. So that makes sense. It incorporates our view. What about AEP and ExxonMobil? AEP was expected to outperform ExxonMobil based on our view and the implied equilibrium returns were the reverse ExxonMobil was going to outperform AEP when we look at our expected excess returns after incorporating our view we see that AEP is earning 0.7% a month while ExxonMobil is only earning 0.4% a month this makes sense the expected excess returns do seem to reflect our views. The other thing to notice, we haven't taken a view on Merck. And as a result, the weight for Merck is, is basically unchanged to three decimal places. Now we've calculated the expected excess returns, according to Black Litterman. Let's see what this does to our portfolio weights. If we go to the matrix calculations worksheet, we can fill out the worksheet using Black Litterman expected excess returns. Here we have our portfolio allocation calculation that we've done based on historical excess returns and CAPM excess returns. First of all, we need to calculate the expected excess returns. Well, 
we've already done that. The expected excess returns for the Black Litman model, we have called them mu underscore bl. Control Shift Enter. We have our expected excess returns for Black Litman. Let's label that x underscore mu underscore bl so that we're being consistent with the names we used for the cap m and for the historical expected excess returns. The next step, if we're looking at the unrestricted optimal portfolio, is to calculate z. So let's select the five cells for the cap m plus the summation and copy them across to the black vitamin column. Now all we have to do Select the five cells for Intel, AEP, Amazon, Merck, and ExxonMobil, and change the names. We need to do X underscore mu underscore BL. Then we'll press Control Shift Enter. We've now calculated Z for the black litmus expected excess returns. We also have to change our summation. First, we need to name these five cells for the black Litterman calculation. So we'll call that Z underscore BL. Now we can calculate the sum of the elements of Z for the black Litterman model. I'm going to do sum open bracket Z underscore BL. Press enter. And let's name that cell sum Z underscore BL. Now we can calculate the unrestricted portfolio weights based on the black Litterman expected excess returns. Let's select the five cells for the cap M and copy them across because the formula is going to be similar. And now, and now all we need to do is change the names and refer to BL rather than cap M. We can press Control, Shift, and Enter. The last thing we need to do is check that the weights sum up to 1, and they do. We have the weights based on the Black Litterman expected excess returns. Let's name them W underscore BL. We can also calculate the weights if there is no short selling. We can also calculate the weights assuming that short selling is not allowed. To do that, we first of all need to enter in some numbers for the weights to start with. We'll enter 0.2, so it's an equally weighted portfolio to start with. We also need to calculate the sum of the weights because if you recall, when we're going to use solver, we need to tell solver what constraints there are. And we know that the weights must add up to 1. And if we're using solver, we also need to enter what is the target cell. And if you recall, what we want to do is maximize the reward to risk ratio or the expected sharp ratio. To do that, we need to do some more calculations. We need to calculate expected excess portfolio returns. We also need to calculate portfolio variance. And then we can calculate the Sharpe ratio. Let's name the five cells where we've got the weights for the Black Litterman model. And let's call them W underscore BL underscore NS. Let's label the sum as sum w underscore bl. That way it's easy to refer to in the solver calculations. The expected excess portfolio returns are going to be equal to w transpose times by mu minus rf. So we're going to use matrix multiplication. The first array is going to be the transpose of 
the weights, which is W underscore BL underscore NS. And that's going to be multiplied by the excess expected returns based on the Black Litterman model. X underscore mu underscore BL. Close brackets, control, shift, and enter. The portfolio variance will be equal to W transpose times by S times by W, which equals M mult, open brackets, M mult. The first element is going to be the transpose of the weights, which is W underscore BL underscore NS. Close brackets, comma, multiplied by S. Close brackets, comma, multiplied by W again. So W underscore BL underscore NS. Close brackets. Press Control, Shift, and Enter. Here we have the portfolio variance. Now we can calculate the expected Sharpe ratio, which is equal to the expected excess portfolio returns divided by the square root of the variance. We need to name this cell for the expected Sharpe ratio. So Sharpe ratio underscore BL underscore NS. We're ready to use Solver. Let's go to the Data tab and select Solver. The target cell for Solver is going to be the expected sharp ratio, which is named SR underscore BL underscore NS. We're going to set that value equal to the maximum. That's what we want Excel to do, is find the maximum Sharpe ratio. The cells that we can change are the weights, which we've named underscore W underscore BL underscore NS. And we have two constraints. The first constraint is that the sum of the weights must equal 1. The second constraint is that the weights must be greater than or equal to 0. W underscore BL underscore NS must be greater than or equal to 0. There are the two constraints that we need. Let's click Solve. Keep the solver solution. Here are the weights for the optimal portfolio when no short selling is allowed, based on the Black Litterman expected excess returns. The question now is whether the new portfolio weights make sense. In this table, we have the market weights for all five stocks, and we have the new portfolio weights for the optimal portfolio in which we are allowed to use short selling. Do the new weights make sense given our views? First of all, let's consider Intel and Amazon. We were positive about Intel and negative about Amazon. According to the market weights, we should have invested 18% in Intel and 4% in Amazon. But after incorporating our views, the new portfolio weights suggest that we should be investing 37% in Intel and we should be short Amazon 15%. That does make sense. We were very negative about Amazon and very positive about Intel. So we would expect to see extra weight placed on Intel and less weight placed on Amazon relative to their market weights. What about AEP and ExxonMobil? We were very positive about AEP relative to ExxonMobil. If we look at the market weights, we were only meant to invest 2% in AEP and 60% in ExxonMobil. But in our new portfolio, we're investing 49% in AEP and only 13% in ExxonMobil. This is consistent with our view. 
that we think AEP is going to outperform ExxonMobil. What about Merck? We had no views on Merck. When we used the market weights, we, used, we invested 15% of our wealth in Merck. And in the new portfolio, we also invest 15% of our wealth in Merck, which makes sense. Nothing has changed for Merck. We had no views about Merck, so we should just hold the market weights for that stock. That's all I want to talk about today. We have now implemented the Black Litterman model in Excel. One caveat to what we have done today. The views that I have incorporated into the Black Litterman model are extreme. It is very rare that you will have views that AEP will outperform ExxonMobil by 1% per month. That's 12% per year. While Intel is going to outperform Amazon by almost 20% per year. These are very extreme views. I used extreme views so that you could see the difference when we looked at the portfolio weights after we've incorporated our views. In reality, your views will be much less extreme. You may think AEP will outperform ExxonMobil by just 0.3% a month. And with less extreme views, you will get less extreme differences in the new portfolio weights. See you in class.